Hello, my name is Ruby. I've been teaching other AFP uh, lectures. Uh, hopefully, you've seen them all. But today, we're going to be talking about sensation and perception. Um, so, let's get started. So, thresholds. Sensation it is a process of taking information from the environment. Perception is how we recognize, interpret, and organize our sensations. Detection threshold. The act of sensing a stimuli. In some experts, some researchers determine the smallest amount of sound, taste, or other stimulus that an individual can detect um, called absolute threshold. Um, in a typical experiment, experimenter place a series of tones of varying volume to determine exactly what volume the participants first report that she or he hears the tone. Signal detection theory, theory SCD, another SD, SDT, another approach to measure detection threshold. This theory takes into consideration that there are four possible outcomes on each trial in a detection experiment. So first is the hit, which is signal what's present and the participant reported hearing it. And the second one is miss. Um, the signal was present, but the participant did not sense it. Um, false alarm. Didn't, false alarm is the signal was absent, but the participant did, did sense it. Um, correction, re, correction, rejection. The signal was absent and the participant did not report um, here, sensing it. So the discrimination threshold, the the ability to distinguish the difference between two stimuli, just noticeable difference, the minimum amount, of the distance between two stimuli that can be detected in dis indistinct, an experiment um, might involve playing pairs of tones, playing varying volumes. The participant will try to determine the tones that they heard were the same, were same or different. Epner's Webner noticed that the low weights. It was easier to notice in the increase or decrease or half once uh, in weight, but the high weights, but at high weight, 32 ounces. Participants were not able to judge half an ounce difference. Webner law: the greater the magnitude of the stimulus, the larger the difference must be noticed. Subminimal perception: a form of preconscious processing that occurs when we are present with stimulus so rapidly that we do not consciously, we are not consciously aware of them. So, to put the tongue phenomenon, which we try to recall something that we already know that is available but not easily accessible to consciousness. Uh, receptor process: receptor cells, sensory organs have specialized cells that are designed to detect specified types of energy. Receptive field, the area from which a receptor cells receive input. Um, Transduction, a process the receptors convert the input or stimuli into neutral influences which are sent to the brain. So example, when we hear something, the tiny receptor cells in the inner ear first convert mechanical um, variation into electrochemical signals. These signals are then carried to the neur by neurons to the brain. So contralateral shift. At the level thalamus, in which much of the sensory input of one side of the body travels to opposite of the brain, except the affectory, which is more direct path to the central um, cortex, cerebral cortex. Um, sensory coding is a process by which receptors convey such a range of information to the, to the brain. Single cell recording is a technique by which the firing rate and patterns of a signal receptors can be measured in response to varying sensory input. Visual sensation occurs when the eye receives light input from the outer world. And then the distal stimuli is the object as it exists in the environment. And the proximal stimuli is the image of the object on the retina. So visual sensation. Um, this is going to be pretty complex, but hopefully people go along with me. Um, so first, the light passes through the cornea, which is a protective layer on the out outside of the eye. Just under the cornea is the lens. The cord, the cord of it of the lens charges accommodate for distance, so it changes every time how distance or far it is. Um, the, these changes are called accommodation. The retina is at the back of the eye and serves as the screen onto which the proximal stimulus is projected. The retina is converted into receptors known as rods and cones. Rods are located on the periphery of the retina are sensitive in low light, and the cones are concentrated in the fovea, which is the center of the retina, and which are sensitive to bright light and color vision. 
So after the light stimulates to the receptors, this information passes through the horizontal cells, to the bipolar and amacrya cells. The stimulation then travels to the ganglion cells of the optic nerves. The optic nerves cross of the optic chasmia send half of the information from each visual to the opposite side of the brain. Each visual field includes information from both the left and the right eye. The brain is stimulatedly identifying the patterns of what is seen. So here is a graph about like the eye. So we talked a lot about the pupil, the, the cornea, the lens, optic nerve, um, the retinia. So this is a, just a graph to see where the, these things are located in the eye. So serial processing occurs when the brain computes information step by step in the medical and linear manner. Parallel processing happens when the brain computes multiple pieces of information simultaneously. On feature detector, neurons that see different parts of the pattern, such as a line, set a specific angle to the background. So sensory mechanisms. Young Hubble's theory, theory is a theory that says that the cones of the retina of the eyes are activated by light waves associated with fruit, blue, red, and green. All these colors by mixing. You can see all this color by just mixing these three. So the opponent process theory contends that the lens which the thalamus responds to opponent pairs of receptor sets, namely black and white, red and green, or blue and yellow. If one color is activated, then the other is turned off. After image, when you it's like when you see a red dot in a paper and then you turn to a black paper, then you see the dot that is green. Color blindness occurs in males do not have certain because they don't have certain cones and this is basically genetic. Um, dichromats are people who cannot distinguish along the red and the green or the blue and the yellow continuum. And the monochromas are seen only in shades of black and white, which is more rare. So the auditory mechanisms, auditory input, the form of sound waves enters the ear by passing the outer ear, the part of the ear that is one outside of your head and into the canal. So the outer ear collects and magnifies sound waves. That vibration then enter in the middle ear, first obtaining tenactic membrane. This membrane puts ossicles, which is the mounts, incus, and stapes. The vibration of the tympanic membrane vibrates the ossicles. The last of the three ossicles is the stapes, which vibrates against the oval window. The oval window is the beginning of the inner ear. So the vibrations further jiggle the cochlea, which the cochlea are the hair-like receptor cells known as cilia, which move to the response of the vibrations. Both the cochlea and the cilia are part of the basal membrane. From the, for the, from the cochlea, the sound energy, energy is transformed to the auditory nerve, and then from the temporal lobe of the auditory cortex. The inner ear is also responsible for balance and contains vestibular sacs, which have receptors sensitive to when you, you're tilting. So here's the graph um, that we just talked about. So how the process goes. So the waves come to the peanut, which is the outer ear, and then go to the auditory co co canal. Then they touch the eardrum, and then it goes to the middle of the ear, which the ossicles, my feeling is, keels and stapes are here, and then the cochlea, which is here, and how, all that transfers to the brain. So place theory asserts the sound waves genetic activity at the different places along the basilar membrane. Frequency theory is a hearing states that we sense a pitch because the rate of neutral impulses is equal to the frequency of a particular sound. Deafness occurs for the damage of the ear of the structure of the neural of the neural pathway. Conductive deafness refers to injury of the outer or the middle ear structure, such as the eardrum. Um, sensory nuclear nerve deafness olfactory a chemical sense of like smell um gustation is also a chemical sense of taste um cutaneous receptor and tactile receptors provide information about the pressure pain and temperature cold fibers fire in response to cold stimuli warm fibers which are sensitive to warm stimuli so of a secular sense involves sensation of balance located in the semicircular canals of the inner ear um, the kinesis found in the joints and ligaments transmits formation about the location, the position of the limbs, and the body parts. Adaptation is an unconscious temporary change and responsive to environmental stimuli. Habituation is the process by which we become accustomed to a stimuli and notice it less and less over time. This habituation occurs when a change in the stimuli, even a small change, causes to notice it again.
attention. Selective attention. We try to attend one, to one thing while ignoring another. Cocktail party phenomenon, which refers to ability to carry on and follow a single conversation in a room full of conversations. At the same time, our attention can quickly be drawn to another conversation by key stimulus, such as someone saying your name. This is, implies that we are definitely attending to information that we are not consciously aware of that moment. Study where, study where a person puts the earphones and listens to di two different messages. On each side, has one re only has to repeat one message, and the repetition is called shadowing. Attentional resource theories: only a fixed amount of attention that is at this resource can be divided up as a required to a given situation. Filtered theories. Purpose of stimulus must pass through some sort of screen or filter to enter into attention. Divided attention, trying to focus more than one time at a task. More difficult when attending two or more stimulus that are active at the same sense. Success with this will decline with age. Perceptual process, bottom of processing, activates recognition of objects by breaking them down into components parts. The brain's analysis and acknowledgments of the raw data. Top-down processing is when the brain labels a particular stimulus or experience. Visual perception perceives depth, depth, size, shape, motion, and it facilitates by various perceptual cues because it's limited ability to the, to the brain of processing for information. Particular depth cues, those we need and only one eye to see. Relative size refers to the fact that images that are farther from us project a smaller image on the retina than those who are closer to us. Textual gradient. The patterns of distribution of objects appear to grow denser as distance increases. Linear perspective is a monocular cue base in the perception that parallel lines seem to be closer together as lines risen to a distance. Vanquish point. Um, the point at which two lines become indistinguishable from a single line and then disappear. Monocular depth cues are those that we need only one. We only need only one e one eye to see. Relative size refers to the fact that images are farther from us, project a smaller image in the retina than those who are closer to us. Texture gradient: the gradient, the pattern distribution of objects appear to grow denser and the distance increases. Linear process. process Sorry, that was repeated once again. So let me skip that. Um, aerial perspective. It's a base of observation that atmospheric moisturize and dust tend to obscure objects in the distance more than they do with nearby objects. Relative clarity is a perceptual cue. Clue that explains why less distinct fuzzy images appear to be more distant. Motional parallax is the difference in the pair movement of objects at different distances where the observer is in motion, binocular depth cue, rely on both eyes. Viewing an image um, stereoscopes refers to three-dimensional image of the world resulting from binocular vision and the retina convergence depth cue that results from the fact that your eye must turn inward. Binocular disparity which results at the fact that the closer an object is the less similar the information arriving in your eye will be. Eleanor Gibson and Richard Walk developed the visual cliff to test depth perception. Visual cliff was a glass tabletop that appeared to be clear on the side and had to check board this line visible on one side. The inference that were placed on the cliff as they would cross over the depth side did not cross over, which implies the depth perception was at least partial in name. Um, Gasol's approach um, to form perception is based on top-down theory, which says that most perceptual stimulus can be broken down into figure ground relations. Basic assault approaches, proximity. The tendency to see objects near to each other as forming groups. Similarity. The tendency to perceive preferentially forms to make up my mirror images. Continuity. The tendency to perceive preferential fluid or continuous forms rather than jagged or regular ones. Closure. The tendency preferably to close up objects that are not complete. So, loss of prognosis. We tend to see objects in their simplest forms. Constant, constancy. Stimulus remains the same size, shape, greatness, weight, or volume, even though it does not appear to. A pair of motion, appearance of movement, 
feature detector approach looks at specific aspects of particular stimulus, motion detection, perceived motion, one by records of changing motions of objects as it moves across the retina, two being moved to our head to follow the stimuli, Stroptic effect with pictures move as fast enough space to imply movement, um, autochemic effect, the still light that appears to wrinkle in darkness. So that is it for this lecture, um, with sensation and perception. Hopefully, um, you you can go over this um, as many times as you want, slower or faster in your pace. Um, but next, the next one we're gonna um, as fast as you want. Um, we're gonna be talking about next time the con the states of consciousness. So hope to see you there.